Hi, my name's Luke Jago and I play for Green Gully Football Club. So, uh, yeah, obviously it's every kid's dream and every, you know, you know, every young kid who plays football's dream is obviously to go on and make, make a living out of it and, you know, it's probably the best thing you can do if, if that's your hobby and you can make a living out of it and you can make money out of it while enjoying yourself. I think that's, you know, everyone's dreams. Obviously that, that's the dream for me and it's a dream that I still feel alive. Um, but I know that obviously it takes a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifice and you know I have been, I have been lucky in the sense that I, I spent four years at a professional club and uh, I saw what it t took to you know, get to the very top. Not only do you have to be determined, you have to work hard, you have to have discipline, you have to have all those things. Those are just a benchmark but as well you've got to have luck on your side which a lot of people, you know, in the game don't, don't, I think, don't understand or outside of the game don't understand that it plays a part and timing. Um, and then you've got to take, you know, take your chance when it comes. So that's what I'm, what I'm hoping to be doing in the future. But as I said, you know, I was in that elite environment and it allowed me to see what it's all about, what you need to, to make it to that next level. So I think also, you know, you, as, a, as a footballer, you learn that, uh, if you're going to make in the game, you've got to have, you've got to be strong. You've got to stay strong, and that comes with setbacks as well, which is all part and parcel of it. And I've had I've had plenty of them. Um, you know, as I as I came out of uh, Melbourne Victory, and I, I didn't things didn't go the way I wanted. I you know I had that next chapter, and and unfortunately for me, I, I had a pretty serious knee injury when I was 20 years old. Um, I tore my ACL and, and a few other ligaments and I was out for, for a year and um, you know I know in my situation a lot of people would probably probably call it a day because there's probably not a, not many 20 year olds with a knee injury who, who, who have gone on to go to that next level especially after not having any first team games but you know that doesn't that doesn't stop me it's something that I still want to do and I still think I've got the ability to do and um, if, yeah if you don't have that self-confidence and drive you it's it's cutthroat and, and you won't make it so I've seen as I said I, as I've seen what what it takes to get to the next level and I still have that confidence that I've got got that ability in me so that's what keeps me going every day and you know that goal that you that one day you're gonna walk out in front of how many thousand people and you know that all, all the hard work, all the sacrifice, you know, the pain when you come out of surgery, all was worth it in the end. Hi, my name is Mark Milligan and I play for Melbourne Victory. I came back on on loan to Melbourne Victory during a, a very difficult period for the club. You know, I think that year we finished. I came towards the back end of the year and we, we finished second last. So, you know, I know it's only a short history, the A League and whatnot, but it was definitely a, a tough time in in Melbourne's history. And you know, I think that three years later to to be back on top, winning the minor premiership and the championship was was a very special journey to be a part of. It's a uh, it's a very, very good club that has a very big fan base and in all honesty I think probably the fans are the ones that, that dragged us through the tough times. I remember when, as I said, we finished second last and we are still having 20,000 odd people at, at home games to, to just recently when we played the grand final at home and you know we had thousands of people outside the stadium. I think I think all players have moments in their career. Um, in terms, you know, when when you start out, you're sort of carefree and just very excited to to be playing professional football and, and things like that. But um, in my career, I sort of got to a point when I was about probably 22 or 23, and I fell on some from some difficult times with football, with injuries, um, with the club that I was at being overseas and. Uh, you know, really didn't enjoy getting up and, and going to work every day and you know, I think it's those moments where you can sort of go either way, you know, there are, I'd be lying if I said I didn't think about other options that I had to, to move away from the game and things like that, but I think my successes now are due to just putting my head down and, and working hard and I think if you work hard, 
things sort of falling into place for you and um, you know at that stage I was very lucky I met my wife and uh, you know she was definitely a calming influence and it's really ever since then uh, I guess I've really appreciated uh, the position that I'm in, how privileged I am to be a professional athlete and uh, to have the opportunities that I've had and, and I think that's a that's a thing that keeps me going I guess and, and that I can attribute my successes to now that um, you know that I guess those that crossroad that I came to that I uh, you know I decided just to put my head down and and work hard and and uh, yeah I think that that's the catalyst for it all I think um, you know there's always hard times but if you come out of them strong and positive uh, the, the good times mean more My name is Jason Davidson and I play for the Socceroos. Yeah, I left home when I was 14 years old. I moved over to Japan by myself. It was a very surreal experience because I think as a 14 year old, just uh, jumping off, jumping, getting onto a plane and you know, going to another country, not speaking the language and a different culture. It was very difficult and very lonely. Um, but that's what I had to do to become a footballer I, in my perspective and it was it was a step to follow my dream um, so like I said I went over there when I was 14 and uh, I think the first six months they were really really hard I didn't speak the language um, and over time once I started to learn the language and to, to learn and respect their culture that's when I started to really enjoy my football I went over to Holland and I think it's a fantastic league in Holland because they give youngsters a go. Um, you know, I had a really a solid 6-7 games because I just broke in right at the end of the season. Um, and then the next season after that, that's when I um, got my uh, first international cap for Australia. So it was an unbelievable feeling, a dream come true because I, or that was, that was um, my dream since I left home at 14 to make sure that I, I worked hard and to, to represent my country. So it was unbelievable, unbelievable feeling. Uh, unfortunately, on my debut, I scored that own goal. As a footballer, we all go through our you know, highs and lows and I've definitely gone through a lot of lows in my career. You know, another big setback for me. At the time, I thought it was a setback, but as I look back now, it was something as a, as a blessing in disguise, I think, when I scored that own goal. Um, I thought it was a major setback because I thought that uh, that was my last chance because it was such a shameful experience. But then I started to realize that it just made me that stronger character to, to, to want more and to make sure to, to fix, to make sure it never happened again. So every game now, when I go to, to, to play for the national team, I always have that in the back of my head to, to make sure I think that extra, or make sure I'm extra careful that I don't score an own goal. So now I look back at it and I think it's it's something that makes you stronger. And if ever, like I said, everyone goes through those set, setbacks and keep, I'm pushing forward now and I'm sure that in the future there'll be other setbacks and I just need to find ways to make sure I get, overcome those ones as well.